All right, what I'd like to do is show you guys how to complete the square of a function so therefore we can get it into vertex, so we can get it, I'm sorry, not into vertex form, but so we can get it into standard form um, so we can be able to find the vertex of our uh, parabola. So the first thing, guys, that we need to make sure we do is we need to make sure that we have our, our x squared terms and there's nothing in front of them. This one, it's okay. Over here, though, we have a negative 1. So I need to factor out my negative 1. And I need to factor it out of my x squared and my x term. So I'm going to rewrite this as a negative x squared minus 2x plus 5. We don't need to factor negative 1 from the 5 because um, it's not really going to help us find a perfect square. The next thing we need to do is we need to, we need to figure out how we're going to get our perfect square. Well, there's a way we can get a perfect square every single time. And what that is, is to take, um, first of all, we need to remember what a quadratic equation looks like. And what we need to do is we need to take b over 2 and square it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add that. We're going to take our b over 2, square it, and we're going to add that to our, um, to our function. And this parentheses? You're going to have to add it into the parentheses, and, yeah. and obviously you're going to have to subtract yeah. it, right, so to keep your equation. equation. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> squared. Right. So right. we have x squared plus 6x, b, which is 6, divided by 2, which is 3. 3 squared is 9. Now, to keep my function going, though, I, if I add 9, to keep a equation still equal, I have to subtract 9, and then plus 8 is still there. So the only thing I did was I added a 9, and I subtracted a 9. Now, I'm going to keep these within parentheses, because what this does, this now gives me a perfect square. Well, this we can rewrite as x plus 3, which is the whole reason why I want to complete the square when finding it in the um, vertex form. Can you keep that up there? Yep. So you have f of x equals x plus 3 squared minus 1. Now I've transformed from a quadratic equation into our standard form of our equation. This problem is a little bit more difficult because now what we have to do is I'm still going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my b over 2a, I'm sorry, b over 2, which is negative 2 divided by 2, which gives me negative 1, right? And then negative 1 squared gives me 1. So I'm going to have x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, everyone else think, okay, so I'm subtracting, so I'm adding 1, so I'm going to have to subtract the 1, right? Plus 5. Now, here comes the really, here comes the difficult part, though. Am I really adding a 1? Be careful, because there's a negative sign that's supposed to be distributed, right? So if I was to distribute this again, this would actually be a negative 1. So technically, what I am doing is, I am actually already subtracting. Uh, I'm already subtracting a 1, so I'd have to actually add back my 1. So this is actually going to be a negative. I'll say this again. Here, you say, oh, add 1 minus 1, right, to keep it even. But this is actually isn't a positive 1. If I distribute this negative sign, this is actually a negative 1. So really, what I need to do is, if this is a negative 1, that means I need to add. Well, if I do a double negative, that's going to give me adding. So really what my equation looks like is negative x squared. Actually, let's just write this perfect square. What number multiplied by itself gives you 1 but adds you negative 2? That's x minus 1 squared. This becomes negative plus ne negative times negative is a positive, so it's plus 6. All right, so well, I'm going to say these are functions. And really quick, if you wanted to figure out, if they say, well, here is in a standard form, all right, and that's just completing the square. A lot of times, though, we want to actually find the values for x. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to find the values of x, you just plug f of x equal to 0, and then solve. So to solve, you add a 1. To undo that, you square root the root, so therefore you're left with 1 equals x plus 3, minus 3 on both sides, x equals, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's plus or, uh, plus or minus. And then therefore you have x equals plus or minus 1 minus 3. Because remember, take the square root, it's going to be plus or minus, right? So you'd have x equals plus or minus 1 um, plus 3. So you can do x equals a negative 2 or negative 4. All right? 
And then for over here, you can do the exact same solution. Um, or you do the exact same thing over here. All right?